In next minutes, I want to illustrate how CASIP, the Central Advisory Service on Intellectual Property, uses system dynamics modeling to depict the functions of IP. Let's take as an example the average lifetime of a patent. The average lifetime of a patent, of course, grows with the lifetime of each patent. This relationship is represented by the blue arrow that points from patent lifetime to average patent lifetime and the positive sign it carries. The higher the patent lifetime, the higher the average patent lifetime. But what is it that determines how long patents last? The owner has to pay a regular maintenance fee in order to keep the patent. Once we know how likely it is that the owner pays the maintenance fee in any given period after registration, we will know when he decides to stop paying and thus when, he, when the patent expires. The higher the likelihood of maintaining a patent for the next period, the higher the patent lifetime. This relationship is again represented by the blue arrow that points from the first to the second variable and the positive sign it has. Let's now proceed step by step to ask ourselves the causal relationships that we would expect. What is it that determines the likelihood of maintaining a patent for the next period? Well, we could expect the company to compare the present discounted patent value in any given period with the patent maintenance fee. The higher the first, the more likely the company will be to keep the patent. So the higher the likelihood of maintaining a patent for the next period. Again, the positive relationship is represented by a blue arrow with a plus sign. For the second variable, however, the story is different. The higher the patent maintenance fee, the lower you would expect the likelihood of maintaining a patent for the next period to be. Thus, we have a negative relationship represented with a minus sign next to the arrow. Now we can ask again, what is it that determines the present discounted patent value and maintenance period and the patent maintenance fee? The patent maintenance fee is not a variable that our company can control and it's unlikely that any decision our company makes will have an impact on this variable. Therefore, we treat it as, as exogenous, meaning not included in any feedback loop and leave it unexplained. It will become clear in a few steps. For now, we focus on explaining the present discounted patent value and maintenance period. We will not go through all variables in detail as you know the procedure by now, but let's highlight that the variables at the bottom are treated as, as exogenous. It is not that the company cannot decide about them or its decisions will not influence these, but simply because we do not want to focus on them to limit the extent of our analysis. Let's look at the number of citations received from subsequent patents, a bit closer. This variable tells our company how many other patents from other companies rely on or at least have something to do with the invention that is particularly patent covers. The longer a patent has been filed, the more research will have been done in the same field and the more likely it is that other patents will refer to the patent of the company. Therefore we think that there is a positive relationship between the patent lifetime and the number of citations received from subsequent patents. The relationship is presented in the usual manner. Interestingly, the blue arrow is the last in the chain of arrows that now represent the loop. The name causal loop diagram refers to this particular feature, the presentation of loops. Generally, it means that a particular variable has an impact on its own future, most often through a chain of other variables. Future because things rarely happen instantaneously. If this sounds like circular reasoning to you, be aware that through the delays that are involved in the processes that are involved in the loop, this relationship can happen. Now let's have a look at the loop. The chain of variables it contains all positively relate to each other. We see only positive arrows in the whole loop. That means if we start on any level of one of these variables in the loop at any particular point in time, we will end up having more of that variable after a certain period. The behavior this loop characterizes is reinforcing. The more we start with, the more we will have, and thus the more we can start with again and so forth. Completing the picture at once now, we find two additional loops. One deserves a closer look, as it is not reinforcing. The higher the present discounted patent value and maintenance period, the higher we assume the opposition probability and maintenance period to be. This follows the idea that the incentive of other patent owners to challenge the patent of our company increases with the value of the patent. It is the value of the patent of our company very low, then other companies are less likely to challenge it than if it were rather high. 
Now the opposition probability and maintenance period truly determines the risk of successful opposition. The more likely it is that our pattern gets challenged, the more likely it is that some of the challenges might be successful. The risk of successful opposition now has a negative impact on the present discounted pattern value and maintenance period. If we measure the value in terms of what our company could get if it decides to sell the patent, then a higher risk of successful opposition decreases that value. Having this single negative relationship in the loop causes the entire loop to be counteracting or balancing in the sense that the effects of the variables counteract each other or balance each other. With this example, we intend to demonstrate the creation of cause loop diagrams. We look forward to your feedback. Thanks for watching Sys Dynamics at CASIP.